Jill Simonello with Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I am in Austin, Texas, and they have just revealed the Lexus GX, and it's really loud in here, so I'm gonna apologize for the headphones, but I'm trying to cancel out some of the clutter as well as hopefully give you a better sound quality. So, um, the first thing I'm gonna tell you is this looks a lot better in person than it's probably gonna look in this video, but this is the first time I've seen it, so let's, let's check it out together, shall we? So, let's go. Let's start with the side profile because this is really cool. This is very different from anything that Lexus has ever put out before with a very tall and upright stance. I like the blocky look to it. I love the black accents. And yeah, you do still have some of the traditional Lexus styling with the pinch nose grille and the L-shaped headlights, but this is gonna be a very unique, very distinctive vehicle. And as I said in the intro, this looks a lot better in person than it does um, <laughs> in this video, I am sure. So just a couple of details to know, this will have a 3.4 liter twin turbocharged V6 engine, delivers 349 horsepower, and it is mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. There is going to be a hybrid powertrain coming, but we don't have any details on that, and they haven't said when it's coming. Now this specific model in front of us is going to be the rugged overtrail edition and so you'll be able to tell this apart by the um, two-tone color so the black roof and then the different color of the body and these 33 inch wheel or 33 inch tires 18 inch wheels um, with the blacked out appearance this is a three-row vehicle, but I don't know who's gonna use this as a three-row vehicle. And here's a really cool feature. Um, they are bringing back the pop-out glass, so um, you can lift a glass so you can reach in and out to grab the you know, cargo, or I don't know if you have a dog, maybe they just wanna sit in there um, with their head propped out. I wouldn't drive that way, though. That's just me. Um, all right, so over-trail model. We don't have any pricing information. We don't have any uh, availability information other than it will be hap um, happening, um, I think they said later this year. Go to the website, I've got all of the details, all of the specifications that are available and um, a lot more information on that. So be sure to check that out, uh, pickuptrucktalk.com because the story is live now. So um, we'll take a quick look at the interior of the vehicle. And something else that I will point out is you have standard 12.3-inch um, digital display here, and then you're going to have a standard 14-inch um, infotainment screen here. You have the Lexus inf infotainment system, and um, yeah, so it, it, I, I think that that looks really good. Oh, and it thinks I, it thinks I asked it a question. I did not ask it a question. Um, and you probably couldn't hear the answer if I did ask the question anyway. So you do have a couple of hard controls for HVAC and for volume. Um, and then obviously down here, you've got your controls for the um, driving modes and things that are going to be important in off-road. Also, I just want to point out, I really like this big beefy gear shift. I'm glad they didn't go to a dial or something silly. So. I like the fact that they kept the traditional grill. And on the inside, again, these the, the big upright stance, look at how big those windows are. Everything just looks really good and really, really interesting. So we'll take a look at the back seat. And I mean, this is a generous back seat, although I will say if this is in the far back position, there isn't an oodles and oodles of leg room. So you may have to do some compromising in terms of seating position. You have the pull down for the armrest and cup holders with prongy things. We like the prongy things. And then you have air vents, heated seats back here. Um, USB, oh, it looks like USB A charge ports. That's interesting. And, uh, but no, no climate controls. So um, I'm not quite sure how I feel about that, but um, no climate controls. Okay, and this is interesting. Um, you have this ultra suede like material here and it is green it is green uh, so let's see take one more little look at the interior and yeah that is the uh, GX so 2024 model and 
the styling does take on some of the Lexus cues, the new Lexus design cues. So you've got the Lexus lettering right here, which you're starting to see on all of the different models. And uh, I don't know. I, I would love your comments below. What do you think about this? How do you think this looks? I think it's really attractive. I think that this will sell really well. I like the running boards. I like, uh, yeah, I haven't found anything that I don't like about it. I'm gonna have to drive it to be able to tell you what I don't like about it. So, just a quick look at the GX. However, I'm not only here for the GX because, hey, look at that. Uh, Lexus also unveiled the version of the Grand Highlander, like the Toyota version of the Grand Highlander, which they are calling the TX. And this is going to be a dedicated three-row vehicle that is going to be more family-oriented, like the Grand Highlander, but it's going to have much more lux-level amenities. And again, you see the Lexus styling with the new um, Lexus badging uh, in the back. And then, you know, as you come around here, one of the things that I noticed in this vehicle is you're gonna have a lot more Lexus-like features in it that you don't have in the Toyota version. So it does have this digital latch, the little thing that you have to press to open the door. And one of the things that I really like about it is instead of the pull tab that you have in the Grand Highlander, which I felt kind of cheap to me, you've got this button to push in order to release the second row seat to access the third row seat. So speaking of the third row seats, Lexus does a really good job with its vehicles of carrying the seating material themes all the way through from the front to the third row. So instead of having just like a plain black back here, they actually have the suede material carried through. And I like the fact that this is just going to be a two seat um, third row rather than a three seat third row, because by the way, three people back here is going to be a tight fit. We saw that in the Grand Highlander, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, but like the Grand Highlander, you're gonna have some nice features like this grab handle here to help you get it back into the third row. And then you've got, um, you know, the step. So if you needed to uh, step in, um, you can access it through here, which also very appreciative. And I'll back up a little bit, but this is, this is a really nice wide opening. Now, a problem you're gonna see is if you have car seats, yeah. Um, that's probably not gonna work so well. Uh, but I will say this with the captain's chairs is removable, similar to the Grind Highlander, and you can just pop this up and then you have this little thing here so you can step through. So if you have car seats and you have captain's chairs, you don't have to actually um, use the, the tab to pull it open. And this is really light, I don't, Oh, it is in place. I'm like, I don't think I could put it back in place with one hand, but that just popped right back in place. So thumbs up on that. Um, what else do I want to talk about here? Okay, so this is the family hauler and something that they've done that's different than the GX is they've actually put the climate controls back here. So you have heated and cooled seats available as well as adjustable climate controls. And since I'm the one who's always cold, I definitely appreciate that. Uh, what else? Uh, similar to the GX, but dissimilar actually you do have a 12.3 inch display behind the wheel and you have a 14 inch um, infotainment screen but look at this this is really kind of cool i love how this is kind of curved around the edge and uh, i think it looks really good i think the design is nice and again they've given you hard controls for the things that you are going to touch the most so hvac and your volume knob come back out and I'm going to take a look at the grill and I want you to tell me what you think of the grill because I find it interesting. So um, yeah, here we go, coming around, coming around. You have the Lexus L headlight look treatment and then you have the grill. I'm going I'm to back up and I'm just going to take a beat and I'm going to have you tell me what you think of the grill. What do you think? Have comments below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? It's definitely going to take it some time to get used to because for me, this is just, it's a lot. I kind of feel like those are jail bars. I don't know. Um, but again, the Lexus design, spindle grill, um, you know, it's very bold, very recognizable. And I think that anybody who sees this in the rear view mirror is going to know that it is Lexus. 
So the other thing I want to say is this has three powertrains. So the first two have a 2 point liter turbocharged engine. Um, the first is just a straight gas engine, delivers 275 horsepower. The second is going to be a 2.4 liter turbo hybrid that delivers 336 horsepower and 409 pound-feet of torque. And then um, the final is going to be a plug-in hybrid, so 3.5 liter V6. This is very different than the Grand Highlander. So 3.5 liter V6 plug-in hybrid, 406 horsepower and 33 miles of range. That is impressive. So this will have four trims, standard, premium, luxury, and then um, the F-Sport Performance, which that is what this is. You can tell by the blacked out trim, the blacked out wheels, um, the blacked out mirror caps, and yeah, the F-Badge. So, I don't know. I, I personally like the way that the GX looks, but I think the moneymaker is right here. I think the moneymaker is going to be the TX. Do you prefer one over the other? Um, what do you think? What do you think of the design? Did Toyota knock it out of the park with the GX? Or do you like the TX better? All right, that is what I have for you on the TX and the GX here in Austin, Texas. Like I said at the very beginning, I have a lot more information on the website. Trying to remember all these specs with blaring music and people in the background can be kind of hard. So be sure to go to pickuptrucktalk.com, check out the stories that we have there with all of the information that is available to us, and I will see you down the road.